knocks some pings and gives you more octane to pass, climb, and accelerate. No good, eh? New gas, I mean. New Gulf Super Unleaded. The gas. Guts. Welcome back. We are joined now by the left offensive guard for the Arkansas State Indians, and that is Kenny Armbrust, a guy who four years ago played for Little Rock Catholic High School, is a native of North Little Rock, and has grown considerably during the two years that I've known the guy. He's up to about, what, 265 pounds now? About 260. Well, Kenny, welcome to the program, and you guys are really doing a super job up there at ASU. Thank you, Tony. We were glad to get that last win under our belt there last week and give us some more boost to for this next week, coming they, into the big game against Kansas. They say when you win a ball game like that, it's a character builder, is it? Does it, does it build character on a team, or does it just, what's it build? Morale? What? Both. Because that last drive we made to come back last week and win the ball game showed us that we can come back and overcome adversity, which we did have up there. And uh, that'll carry us into this ball game with our chins high. We have a few hard jacks, too. That's true. <laughs> I guarantee you that. That's true. Well, that Go ahead. Kenny's really done a good job. I think he's an exam weight program. He he played last year at about 240, and uh, he's playing now at 260, and there's a little difference in his performance. Let's take a look at uh, the uh, Central Michigan University game from last week. The offense of Arkansas State will be in the white uniform. Look at the wind. That was a real fast. <laughs> it really was, and it was a tough ball game. You see Waddell Kelly blowing it up through there on the inside belly, and uh, we had success with that play. That's 14-yard gain, and we had a lot of successes in our first scoring drive in the second quarter, and there's Mr. Reliable, Scott McDonald, knocking it in. Scott had a great day for us, and we'll be talking to him later. I tell you, boy, they had some good fans, didn't you think, uh, Ken? They got after it. They really did. They were there before the ball game ever started when we were lining up the stretch. And it was Erwin Beasley slipping out of bounds, fastest guy out of Snow Lake, Arkansas, all 155 pounds. Boy, he can burn it. Kenny is wearing number 57. He's just on the left board of the screen. There Inside belly, Waddell Kelly. Waddell's from Google, Arkansas. Maybe the greatest from Google. Oh, the Robux will get mad at that. <laughs> here we go with Maurice Cawthon from Osceola. Ken's on the left side here at the left guard. Again, Scott McDonald. Right before the half. This was a big one for us. We really didn't need this. It's kind of put us back in the ball game. What were you thinking at the half? I was just glad that we got that last <laughs> field goal there. That was in the second quarter. I'm wrong. Here we come. We're going to pass. Anytime we pass, we're desperate. We throw it to Chisholm, completed from Spivey. That's good protection on your part, too. There you are. See you dropping back. Whoop. Good job. Get your man out. Do what we call the next under again to Chisholm. Turn north and south, Chisholm, before you get killed. The split receivers, they go crazy when we fly the ball. <laughs> this is the one right before that. Two seconds on the clock. 51 yards. This is a uh, cook for him, not only uh, at ASU, but also at uh, El Dorado High School. You can see the band was lined up. They were ready to take the field. We shocked them. This is the third quarter. There's Kenny Armbrose pulling, blocking. Good job. Throwing the Brian Dunn. Played the Little Rock Central just a few months ago. Good catch there, guy. Quick pitch here to, Brian, to, to Beasley again. Maurice caught the lead in the block. Boy, can he burn it. I'm going to tell you something. He may be one of the fastest guys in the uniform. Whoop. He stepped out about 15 yards earlier. But, uh, <laughs> oh, it looked like he was going to get after that guy. <laughs> that guy would pick him up and throw him out of the stadium. Maurice Carthen banging it away. 229 pounds. Good job by our offensive line right here. That was a call handoff to Maurice. Inside belly, good block air by Kenny Armbrough. Inside belly. What did you think about the Central Michigan team I mean, defensively? I thought they had a good defense. They were, they were quick. They weren't as big as the team we're going to face, but they were quick and had good technique. Maurice just banging it away. That's their touchdown, and that's when I thought we had the game won. This is the third quarter. Boys, a great drive. We went against the win. Five minutes to go, everything looked great. We went for two. Bad call on my part. Bad yeah. blocking on yours. That's true. I thought we had the game won, and we turned right around and let them get ahead. Now we start our drive. Great block there with the left half. Timmy Langford's in the game, and he had an outstanding day. He kind of motivated us. Spivey had been had a hurt finger. You see Timmy, there's the Kenny right here at guard. 
Again, the call option. There goes Langford, good running, good pitch late to Waddell Kelly. Kelly's trying to run over all of them lately. He likes to use that 205 pounds. Again, inside belly to Waddell Kelly. I love that play there where he ran over him. Kelly's kind of gotten tough. He thinks he can run over people. Now, I don't tell him he can't. There's a G block, good block by Kenny. The option. Uh, right here, Timmy Langford got hurt. Boy, he motivated, got us down here. Really got us going. You see, he's hurt. We had to put Spivey back in the game, and we uh, you see Timmy hurt right here. But he goes back in the ball game. We were a little concerned here because I hate switching quarterbacks in the middle of a great drive. We don't make it, as a matter of fact. Again, Scott McDonough. Mr. Automatic. He had four. That was the fourth. It was a big one, too, because it gave us a chance <clears throat> to get this drive going. And this was the drive. Good block by Kenny Arthur on the pass. Out route over here again to Byron Dunning. That was a big play. We had second and nine right there, and that gives us an opportunity to make our first down. Keep our drive going. The clock's running. We have like five or six minutes left in the ball game. We're going to come back here. We're going to run the inside belly again. Then we'll punch it to the first guy, give it to the second. Waddell Kelly. Boy, our offensive line did a great job. They just blocked them. They have most of the season. Though. We have what we call a G play on. There goes Lankford. Lankford has good acceleration. He can... Uh, he can really run fast ladder. Ironically, uh, he's not as fast as Pivey, but he looks it to me. Quick pitch, I know he's not as fast as this guy. Burn it. <laughs> he's a designated catcher. You heard of those designated hitters? We put him in to catch the ball. Here he is right here. Good pull, quick pitch, Beasley. Little bitty rocket. He's got to be one of the smallest guys playing college football right now. We can't hardly practice him during the week. He gets beat up some more. Again, Beasley wide on the call option. I told him if the field was 65 yards wide, he'd score 100 touchdowns. <laughs> it's just a little bit too narrow. Here is the big play of this ball game. We have a fourth down. We've got to make it. Fourth and three. We take the call option. We pitch it wide. And Mr. Beasley, great block by Waddell Kelly. Golly. Look at him doing that snow lake shuffle there. Minute pass, I get nervous watching. We're going to go for two, try to put the game where they had to score a field goal, tie. We call what we call a flood route. There's three out. All right. Now, we're now ahead by three points. Dennis Walker, by the way, 22. He was from Kansas, and the 22 there is the one that scored. He's one of our halfbacks we use. Look at that celebrating there. You like to see those two quarterbacks congratulate each other. That was an impressive drive. It really it was. Did a lot for us. Honest to goodness, uh, I, you know, up in the booth, we were going crazy. Did a lot for my contract. <laughs> <laughs> you left the booth after that touchdown. <laughs> That's how I won a game. Well, we didn't leave out the Central Michigan scores on there. Uh, it was kind of maybe confusing to a certain extent. We're going to show you the Central Michigan scores right now, along with the ASU defense. So let's roll right into the defense if we can, Alan, and uh, take a look at uh, the ASU defense now. Who cares about watching Score. This is the final drive of the ball game for uh, Central Michigan. <laughs> this, is really, this is really a tough decision. It's uh, 80 yards to go. They've got a minute. Boy, this is just a beautiful strike. Throws it, and of course, the best thing of all, he gets out of bounds. We're in a defend situation. We're still defending, and here was a, they ran a draw play on us right up the middle, which is a great call by them. The ball's now at the 50-yard line, and I tell you what, he throws this one out of bounds to stop the clock. And it's getting a little nervous right here. 35 seconds to go, second and four. Here is the big play I thought of this whole drive. See, he sits back, he scrambles, we're running around out here, and he throws it right in the middle. If he hadn't have scrambled, we probably would have defended it, but that really gave him great field position. And things look pretty nervous for us. He's dropping back to throw, and he's going to throw another strike. Bam, right on the boundary, they call pass interference on us. And that was the big play that put him down there. See, Henry did not know the he pass didn't think he did. That guy did. So it was pass interference, ball to 11 yard line. We dropped by. I thought he was going to run this one in. Scared me to death. We're trying to contain him. He overthrows. Awful close. We have a situation here where our safety 
is going to knock their tight end out of bounds. I think it's zip play. Big play. We blitz him. We get to him. Look at this strike. Bam. Knock him out of bounds. One yard line. There's eight seconds on the clock right here. They line up to throw to, to run the ball, and we have a great play by Ricky Fishback. Game saving tackle. It's a one yard line, time for one play. We're in a goal line defense. They've got a 230 pound back they're going to hand the ball to. We nap in, bam, right there. Ricky Fishback, 35. He's doing a little celebration. See, and our players don't even realize they stopped the clock. Finally, they let us score. I see a little celebrating going on out there. <laughs> that was you, Coach. <laughs> Coach, was there, you know, on the radio, uh, I had it pointed out to me that there might have been going on down the field a, uh, a protest of some sort. What was going on on the field? The officials, I ran out on the field and said, what in the world happened? Because it was two seconds to go, they stopped the clock, they had no more time out. The officials blew the ball dead. They were trying to line up and run another play, and I asked them, and they said, we made a mistake, Coach, we're sorry. But did they blow it dead to, uh, to allow the unstacking to take yeah, place? Yeah, to let them line back up. <laughs> And they almost did. He said, we would have never let them run a play. And I said, thanks. Yes, nice to know now. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know. Well, we'd like to thank Kenny Armbrust for coming by. And thank in 30 you. seconds, we're going to have Scott McDonald on, who is the Offensive Player of the Week in the Southland Conference. Stay with us. drivers say about unleaded gasoline, you get quite an earful. Americans wanted an unleaded gas that didn't knock and ping, so that's what Gulf created. New Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. One of the highest octane unleaded gasolines you can buy to help get the most performance out of your car. Now, instead of an earful, Americans can get quite a tankful. New Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. Joining us now is uh, the Offensive Player of the Week in the Southland Conference, young Scott McDonald, a freshman from El Dorado. And uh, Scott, you got your bloodbath early and you get a feeling of success after only three games in the season. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show and congratulations on your performance. Well, it's nice to be here and I'm glad I got the opportunity to come, you know. And it's just, I was really uh, nervous during the game, you know. You didn't act scared. No, you didn't. Well, you look confident as heck out there. Cow. Really? You did? How'd that wind help you? I mean, did that, uh, it's got to hurt your, it, it can affect your accuracy. Certainly your distance wouldn't be affected, but. Well, the, the wind was really helping me because most of the time I kicked it, it was blowing towards the goal post. Uh, I wasn't really worried about the distance. It was just getting in between the uprights. Let's take a look at some of these Scott, guys. Scott, by the way, talk. played it. They like to give him a plug, the El Red Wildcats, uh, back in his days. and. Scott's also a golfer. Where did you state something or another in the golf? I was third. Third my junior year. Your junior year. He's so meek. Are you a hooker or a slasher? Just go right down everywhere. the middle. Yeah. <laughs> go <goes> everywhere. <laughs> Let's take a look at the highlights of Scott kicking his four field goals again. This, uh, this came in the second quarter now. Boy, I'll tell you what, Scott. You were booting him from out there in practice. I mean, before the ball game, you were doing pretty well there. How long have you been kicking, Scott? Uh, about four years now, I guess, I, I started. Think, I think that ought to inspire youngsters out there. What, what year did you start kicking? I started at the beginning of my sophomore year in high school. That's you, really strange. You don't find that many people sideliners. How did you decide on that side? Well, I just, uh, we needed a kicker at, at that time because the one we had before then, I graduated, and I'd been to a few Razorback games and saw the way Steve Little kicked, and I thought it looked pretty simple, so I thought I'd try it. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing, he was a great kicker. I know when I saw all him, I wanted one night, and you, you learned some great lessons from a fine kicker. Why, why would you select, uh, I'm glad you asked that question about why, you know, the style you selected. What difference would it be? I would think a straight on would be a lot easier. Well, it, it might be, but it's not for me, you know. Uh, I feel you like... Didn't, you didn't happen to see Steve Little wasn't kicking straight <laughs> on, was he? No, he wasn't. <laughs> but uh, it just... It seems like to me, when you kick soccer style, you have more of a surface area to hit the ball on, you can hit it. But don't you have a greater chance to hook the ball or to slice the ball? I mean, well, hook the ball more because you're coming from that outside in. Let's don't bring that up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, I mean, a lot of people wonder these That's like you know. telling a guy standing over a putt. Now, wait a minute, yeah, it's don't do that to this young man. He had enough trouble in the all-star game. <laughs> he That's remembers that. 
Uh, Scott, what are you? I know you're an outstanding student. I like to let the people know that uh, we do have some out there. We have several of them. What, what are you majoring in? Do you know yet? I'm uh, majoring in pre-optometry and we're a zoology major. What kind of student were you in high school? I know you were good and brag on yourself. I was a uh, 3.9. Because I know one of the schools that uh, he considered, except uh, besides Arkansas State, was what was it, one of those Ivy League, what, what was it? It was uh, Princeton. Princeton. Oh, my It's a Princeton, Arkansas. That's the closest I ever came. <laughs> right outside <laughs> Fort Hatch. Scott, we never seem to have enough time with our guests on this show, and I promise you we'll get you back here during the year and talk with you a lot longer. Thanks for coming on, okay? It's nice to be here. I appreciate it. We appreciate you coming. We'll be back in 30 seconds with a final word. The pipsqueak. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm planning to be at Super Bowl 16. Yeah, in the stands. And so can you. Enter the Gulf Pride Super Bowl sweepstakes. That's the only way he's going to get there. Just fill out an entry form at any participating wide retailers, and you might win a trip to the Super Bowl. Start writing. Okay. James Albert London Baker. <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> it's Bubba. Coach, we have exactly one minute left in the show. I'd like to ask you, you know, for your final thoughts, kickoff 45 minutes away. Well, I really think, you know, for me personally, there's high, there's peaks and valleys, and uh, this is certainly a peak for me to come back uh, to Arkansas State and, and be part of uh, something that is so great, and I think we have a great opportunity to win. Our football team doesn't know they're not supposed to win. We've been underdogs in every game, and we, we won two of the three. It'll be a great challenge. We don't have... A, Truthfully, uh, quite that kind of program yet. And I use the word yet. I think we're improving and we're, uh, we're going to get after them with everything we've got. And, uh, you know, I hope the people in Arkansas enjoy the ball game. It's, it's a great day for the people in Arkansas. There's, there's 17 of my starters from the state of Arkansas. I hope they'll bear that in mind today when they watch us play. We'd like to thank you for stopping by, our guests for stopping by. The uh, game time is 11.30 uh, kickoff airtime on the Indian Sports Network is 11.15. Turn the sound down on the TV. Listen to us on the Indian Sports Network. Until <laughs> next week, goodbye, everybody. For sports, this has been the Larry Lacewell Show with Arkansas State University Athletic Director and Head Football Coach Larry Lacewell. The Larry Lacewell Show has been sponsored by Kentucky Fried Chicken of Arkansas, Cash River Production Credit Association, Budweiser, Gulf Oil, Bob Clare Day in the Pizza Inns of Arkansas, Gas Companies of Arkansas, Coleman Quality Check Dairy, Dr. Pepper Bottling Companies of Little Rock, Pine Bluff, Hot Springs, and Paragool, LG Williams Oil Company, Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. has been a presentation. This ABC Sports Explosive is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by McCulloch Corporation, the biggest name in chainsaws. And a good morning, everyone, from Lawrence, Kansas, Memorial Stadium, where today the Arkansas State Indians meet the Kansas Jayhawks. Arkansas State 2-1, Kansas 3-0. Temperature 54 degrees. We had some heavy rains this morning in Lawrence and a gray cloudy sky on this first Saturday of October for college football indicates we could have a 70% chance of rain. Hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln welcoming you to what we think will be an interesting matchup here on ABC. Arkansas State University simply wants to be a big time college football team. They're Division 1A and they want to get some respect. So they have to do that by playing teams like the University of Kansas. In fact, Larry Lacewell, the head coach of the Indians, says this is the biggest game his team has ever played. 
for the University of Kansas, unbeaten, untied. There are not many of those left in college football already. They, of course, have a tough Big A season ahead of them starting next week. But before that, they worry about the always present danger of an upset. Should be a great matchup today. Working with us, making his debut on ABC College Football, but no stranger to ABC, Bob Biatti. And Bob, I know you're looking forward to college football, a former assistant a few years back at Colorado. That's a little known fact, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bob, I know you spent some time both in Jonesboro with Arkansas State and here in Lawrence with the Jayhawks. What are the mood of these two teams? Well, the mood is fine. I think that what we have here, though, is possibly somewhat of a mismatch, a mismatch at least on paper, because our state, you know, really is moving up to the big eight, and it, it's really hard to say where they could really be in this ballgame. On the other hand, they've really turned around their offense. So, you know, proud team, they could come up and, and play a good ballgame. I know Don Fambro's concerned, too, from his standpoint. It was like this last year. They thought they'd have no problem beating a Louisville club, and they upset them here. Yeah, remember, Lamar beat Baylor. That's right. <laughs> well, that could happen. We all know that in college football. We'll be back to tell you a lot more about these two teams, but first, let's go to our colleagues in New York for college football. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. In addition to the regional action that you'll be seeing all around the country, we'll be keeping you up to date from here in New York on a variety of games which can affect the already shuffled and reshuffled early season top 10. Games such as Temple at number two Penn State, fifth ranked North Carolina at Georgia Tech, which has already victimized Alabama this year. Iowa State is visiting sixth ranked Oklahoma. We'll watch that one. Also, Florida State at seventh ranked Ohio State in Columbus. Eighth ranked Michigan playing at Indiana. Mississippi playing at 10th ranked Alabama. And Michigan State at Notre Dame as the Irish try to rebound from two consecutive defeats. Now, with regard to second ranked Penn State, Last Sunday, CBS Sports reported that Joe Paterno is contemplating stepping down as Penn State coach at the end of this season if the Nittany Lions go undefeated to make way for Navy coach George Welsh. Paterno was asked about the report on his show Sunday evening. Here's what he said. I have no plans to retire from coaching for, for quite a while. I hope, as I've said to a lot of people, I can coach another four or five years. I may get out of this athletic director's job sooner than, than four or five years. But not the coaching. I'm I'm very happy coaching, and I have I don't know where they would get those kind of wild rumors. And that's all it is a rumor. There's no truth to it whatsoever. That's the bottom line from Joe Paterno. When we come back, Dave Dials will have a look at one of football's most unusual coaches. You said no. Hey, Jan, dinner. Well, it's about time. one of America's major life insurance companies may surprise you. It's State Farm. We're probably better known for homeowners and car insurance, but more and more families are discovering we're good for life, too. We deal with customers on all kinds of insurance, so we get to know their needs. Because we're family insurance agents, we can do a better job in your life insurance. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's life insurance the State Farm way. In New York, this is Dave Diles. You think Bear Bryant is an old coach? We found a man who was a great star before Bear got introduced to the McGuffey Reader. And he was coaching before Bear Bryant got out of grade school. His name is Ralph McKenzie. Last Thursday, he became 87 years old, and he's still coaching. He's an assistant at Eureka College, a tiny school of 433 students, 30 miles east of Peoria, Illinois. It was at Eureka that Ralph gained fame as a halfback and a place kicker, and folks remember him as the greatest player in the school's history. He played there seven seasons and became the head coach in 1923 while still playing. He quit once, then came back as an assistant. And you know, he's seen a whole lot of changes in a coaching career spanning seven decades. It's a different type of a game today. It's a more open game than it was in the day when I played or my early days in coaching. 
And today we've got variations of different offenses, more spread formations, and more open type of football than we did in our day, which is more compact, more power plays and things like that, which is different. Ralph also is Eureka's trainer, and you know he's a throwback. He believes winning is 50% preparation, 50% inspiration. You're going to play a whole game, and you're going to play a half again. If you don't play, if you play the first half like you did the last week, you know what's going to happen? Huh? You're going to get beat? You're going to get worse than that. He's like a model almost. Almost, if you really want to put it, almost like a god to our team because he's been here so long. It's not even describable, the amount of emotion that he has whenever he's talking to us. We're on the wrong track, boys. We're on the losing. That's today, let's get on the winning track. That's what we want today. And how are you going to get it? You're not going to get it unless St. Ambrose is not going to lay down and quit to let you win a ball game. No. you got to work for it. Let's go out and win it for these coaches. You deserve to be winning instead of losing. Let's go do it. Ralph McKenzie, who once scored 34 points himself in one game and who kicked a 55-yard field goal, inspired Eureka to victory last week over St. Ambrose. A long time ago, he coached a fellow they called Dutch. Dutch was a three-year starter at Eureka and played offensive and defensive guard. This week, in the White House, Sam Donaldson spoke with that player now the president of the United States, and he talked about his old coach. He infected you with uh, not only his determination, but the principles that he lived by. Uh, uh, when I said earlier about why he could still be doing this now, uh, I think he stayed in training all his life, in his own living habits. But he had a great sense of humor. Um, and I don't know, football was then and a small school that way it was uh, something of a, of a crusade but also there was something he gave you and that was a, a sense of never stopping never giving up don't give up no and I have described many times the end of three hours of practice and when you were really dragging and he would line you up in the goal line and say all right come on he'd stand out in front of you in the 10-yard line backing up and say the duck waddle. The duck waddle is a very painful thing. You squat down, your arms are folded, and you have to waddle like a duck bent down. And finally, and you wouldn't give up, and you didn't want to be left behind, and you see that other goal line coming, and finally, you're about five yards away, and you're ready to fall down, but you cross that goal, and you think it's over, and you hear that voice behind you, and you turn around, and he says, all right, we're going back. The president remembers the coach. And you know, the coach remembers the player. And last July, the old coach got an invitation to come to the White House for lunch. That was in the Oval Office just after I met him. I says, uh, I, uh, I've got a problem. I says, I don't know whether to address you as a citizen of the United States and call you Mr. President, or I address you as a co your former coach and to call you Dutch. He, he really was a man who believed that he had an obligation with regard to character development and that uh, he took the game also very seriously been a great athlete himself and uh, it doesn't surprise me today that that he is still as active as he is and so at a very young 87 ralph mckenzie still prowls the sidelines inspiring motivating teaching doing all he can to make young men the best they can be Quite a man, Ralph McKenzie. Jim just said, I hope I look that good when I'm 87. I said, I'd like to look that good now. <laughs> we'll be keeping you up to date on lots of football action all around the country. We'll have scores and highlights throughout this afternoon. And let's go back now to the game you're watching in your area. Could we see the McCulloch 610 chainsaw? But you're beavers. Oh, it's not for us. It's a birthday present for our dad. He just doesn't have the bite he used to. Well, the 610 sure has power to spare. Come on around back, boys. Gosh, it starts faster than that, too. Well, that's the electronic ignition. Gee. And it's got anti-vibration for smooth cutting. Gee whiz. What's that? The chain brake for safety. Wow. Any more questions? Yeah. Can it sing happy birthday? Take it easy, Barney. <laughs> McCulloch 610. Sawing is believing. Fuel economy. Value for your money. 
That's what you'll find in all new General Motors cars and trucks at GM dealers. You'll also find a financial institution whose only business is automotive financing. That's GMA. You know, even when money is tight, credit is available from GMAC and at rates that make good sense. Ask a GM dealer about GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. We're the neighborhood professionals. We're proud to be the one. You know we're working hard for you the moment we've begun. We'll work each day to find a way until the job is done. We're America's number one top seller, Century 21. Your home is the most important investment of your life. Trust it to number one. Century 21. Monday on That's Incredible, the world's most unique human being, a man who actually has two heads. This is the Chevrolet Service Supremacy Award. Of 6,000 dealers in the nation, Russell Chevrolet is one of only 200 who have earned it. For a year, the Russell Service Department worked for it, adding better personnel, better facilities, better equipment, striving to give the customer the... In 1978, after a thorough Chevrolet inspection, Russell became the 23rd dealer in the nation to win the Service Supremacy Award. And they've won it every year since. So for a new car, think Russell Chevrolet, and remember that award-winning service department behind it. Super 7 calls the Hogs to be TCU. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Arkansas State, Kansas, a few minutes away from kickoff here. We're talking about Arkansas State University. They have one of the most interesting offensive turnarounds in college football, Bobby Addy. Well, we, they sure did. As a matter of fact, last year, as we can see, they ranked last, 139th in the country. But this year, they put in the wishbone, and look what's happened to them. They're now fifth in rushing. And look who's first, another pretty good wishbone team, Oklahoma. 324.7 yards a game they're averaging right now. The difference, as he mentioned, the wishbone offense. Larry Lacewell bought it with him from Oklahoma and put it in, and it's working for him. As we welcome you back, Chris Lincoln along with Bob Miatti. Bob, I know when you talk about the wishbone, you have to, of course, on any offense, have a quarterback. But in the wishbone, especially important, that quarterback has got to be a guy who can not only run the football, but also be a great ball handler in the option. And I know they feel they have one, a guy who grew up with the wishbone in Benton, Arkansas, led that team to a state championship in Arkansas, the quarterback, number 13, Rick Spivey. Well, he is. As a matter of fact, he played both in junior high and in high school in the wishbone, and we can see him here. He's the guy that starts everything in the wishbone. He has to really be able to scamper. Here we can see he ride his pullback, go outside, and pitch out when the defensive man commits. He's a good little scrambler. And here we have him going out again. The defensive man goes the other way, and he keeps the ball. He's only 5'8", 170, but a determined runner. The wishbone needs a big bat. A big fullback, and here he is, number 33, Maurice Carthens, 6'1", 220, a junior, a power runner. Well, he's a good one, and in order to make the wishbone work, you've got to have a big, powerful fullback, and they do have one in Maurice Carthens. Here we can see him now going up the middle. We can see how powerful he is. He has to keep that defense on us. He was a tight end until the middle of last season. Now he is the number two rusher. Maurice Carthens, the fullback, number 33, he is the power. Now here is the speed. Number 32, Waddell Kelly, 6'2", 195, a junior, he can fly. Well, he really can fly. As a matter of fact, he's averaging 106 yards for the, each game in the first three games. 4'6", speed in the 40. He is fast, and you know, they have their entire offensive team back. All 11 starters are back from last year. Defensively for Arkansas State, they again believe, as Larry Lacewell did in Oklahoma when he was defensive coordinator there for nine seasons in the Oki defense. It's an aggressive defense. Well, it's a very aggressive defense, and uh, of course, nobody knows how to play defense any better than Larry Lacewell. And I think he's done a great job of bringing this around. Thomas Johnson, number 91, the nose guard. He'll make a lot of tackles for him. Also a very talented, strong safety. One of the best in the Southland Conference, Tim Allison. Well, Tim Allison uh, really is good. He had five interceptions to lead the Southland Conference last year. He's also a preacher. You know, they might need a little bit of help today. <laughs> A very talented football players, this Arkansas State staff, and they realize what a big challenge they have today. They're trying to get into the big time, and they know they've got a tough one to crack today, the Kansas Jayhawks. But Kansas is not without their problems, and they've lost a big star. We'll be back to talk about the Jayhawks next. Ladies and gentlemen, Smokin' Joe Frazier. And in this corner, St. Regis, with a paper bag made with their 
shipping sack paper. Can he punch his way out of it? Watch! This is no ordinary paper. This is an example of the kind of performance you can expect from St. Regis's new stress craft paper. It's stronger than any other shipping sack paper in the U.S. Another example of St. Regis's technology in paper packaging and construction products. Ow! Is this the only one you've got? No problem, sir. Would you buy shoes from someone who only had one brand? So why buy insurance from a one-company agent who can only sell you policies from one company? There's another way to buy insurance from an independent agent. He represents several companies, not just one. So he can choose insurance that fits you and your budget. Maybe you need thin socks, sir. Look for your independent insurance agent in the yellow pages. He's the more than one company agent. You give a man a couple of days to himself and a Black & Decker workmate, and there's almost nothing he can't do. You can pound on it, saw on it, hammer on it, and sand on it. The sturdy vice jaws do the holding for you. You can clamp on it, paint on it, cut a shape on it, drive a screw on it. There's almost nothing you can't do. When America has a job to do, it reaches for Black & Decker. The crowd's still coming in on this Parents' Day in Lawrence, Kansas, just before the Arkansas State-Kansas game. We're still about 10 minutes away from kickoff. Let's take a look now at the host team. The Big Blue, the Jayhawks of Kansas, unbeaten. Well, they are unbeaten, but frankly, they've had kind of a struggling time winning. They've had to come behind in two of those games. As we can see here, the offense has had a little bit of trouble getting going. And they had a real blow uh, last week. They lost one of the great running backs in college football today. He was simply the Big A Conference's Newcomer of the Year. Kerwin Bell, an outstanding back, number four. Here is the series early in the Kentucky game last week. Okay, this is the play where he got hit and then hurt his left knee. Remember, he was all Big 8 as a freshman last year, the first time in Big 8 history that that's happened. A really tough break for Kansas, and he's going to be operated on today in Los Angeles by Dr. Robert, Robert Kerwin, the uh, physician for the L.A. Rams. Real tough break for Kansas. Kerwin Bell down. You see again the injury. Oh, what a hit right there on his knee. They are going to ask for a hardship ruling. They hope to have Kerwin, well, Kerwin Bell back for three more seasons here at Kansas, and he's going to be a great one, we're sure. That puts more pressure, certainly, on the rest of the offense, including number 10, the sophomore quarterback, Frank Sire. Well, Frank Sire is not only from Huntington Beach, California, where Kerwin Bell is from, but they're also best friends. And he had a great freshman year, but he's been a little bit erratic in his sophomore year. Maybe he expected more of himself, but John Hale, the offensive coordinator, feels he has a strong arm and all kinds of talent, and he's hoping for a good game out of him today. See, he can throw the long one to Wayne Capers. Now to the back out of the backfield, Garfield Taylor. And here's the story of a young man who's got to play well. Well, he does, and you know he's shown the capabilities to play well because last week when Kerwin Bell was hurt, he came in and got 135 yards rushing and was named the Big 8 Player of the Week. So he's a pretty good one, too. 6'1", 205, sophomore from Miami, Florida, 9'7", sprinter speed in the 100. We might mention also that last year when KU lost to Oklahoma 21-19, he gained 115 yards in that game. So they really gained up have a pretty good player there. The strength of this Kansas team, though, the defense. And here are two reasons why. The linebackers, Kyle McNorton and Chris Chaburin. They really are good. They're tied in for the team lead in tackles this year. And last week, McNorton had 13 tackles, and he also caused two fumbles. And the defense for Kansas is really a good one. They have turned defensively around with Tom Batter, the defensive coordinator, bought this defense from one of the worst in the Big 8 to one of the best. The kicking game is always important in college football, and you're going to see a great display today. Bucky Scribner, number 8, the punter for the Kansas Jayhawks is number one in the Big 8, number five in the nation, about what, over 47 yards a game? 47.1 yards, and I'll tell you, that's pretty good, isn't it? Not bad. We'll take a look at this game in just a moment. Tomorrow. All new, the all daring. David Frost presents the second international Guinness Book of World Records. have had small four-cylinder cars in Europe for years. Now you Americans are going to have to take care of your cars the way we have had to. Spark plugs are critical. If one goes, you only have three left. Autolite has plugs designed for small cars. They've got a fused glass seal for full power. So if you've got a small car, why not use a plug for small engines? Autolite. 
Autolite spark plugs available from Charles Auto Supply, Russellville, Dave's Auto Parts, Leslie. The service. I think of this often because we at Simmons First are guided by our past. At the same time, we're motivated by what we see in the future. That's why we have a tradition of being innovative. Our bank will continue to be first with new services. A proud past, an exciting future. So come be a part of it all at Simmons First. The two Little Rock newspapers now cost the same. But we think you'll get more of what you buy a newspaper for in the Gazette. Most Arkansans agree with us, too, because they buy almost a million Gazettes every week, nearly twice that of the Democrat. In the last six months, Gazette circulation has grown faster than at any time during the last decade. If you really want Arkansas's largest newspaper, call 371-3800. Start your Gazette subscription today. You'll get what you pay for. The Rockford Files, starting October 12th on Super 7. And we expect quite a football game this afternoon. Temperature again, 54 degrees, uh, cloudy skies, a little bit on the wet side, about a 70% chance of rain in the forecast here, so we could get wet before the day is over. And here they come, the Indians from Arkansas State University, Jonesboro, Arkansas. Fresh off a great victory, Bob Biotti, last week at Central Michigan. Well, you know they had to come from behind to win that game at Central Michigan, and they, they've got this program going pretty well down there. Larry Lacewell, the coach, of course, was the assistant head coach at Oklahoma before he went to Arkansas State. You know, he's had a lot of experience, but this is kind of a different situation. I think he's really enjoying it. I visited him quite a while last week. He's the athletic director. He's got to go out and raise money for the facilities and everything else. We won't see much of him today, though, because he coaches from the press box. They were two and nine last season and now the host team here they come the big blue the Jayhawks of Kansas A victory on the road down in Tulsa, a last-second defensive play, and then two victories at home here over Oregon and Kentucky. As you look at the Indiana State sideline, they get ready, and we welcome you back. Chris Lincoln along with Bob Beatty. We need to talk a little bit about the head coach. He's two very interesting men. As Bob's already touched on, Larry Lacewell made the step from the University of Oklahoma, one of the mega powers in college football, to Arkansas State. Bob, you in Jonesboro, you spent some time with Larry, with his staff. He seems to be enjoying this part of college football. Well, I think he really is. He kind of feels that this is the place where he'd like to stay. It's a beautiful place and a small school, but they're really moving up, as we've already mentioned, in, in football. Obviously, they're playing a Big 8 team today. They're going to find out how far they move up, I think, after this one. But, you know, he's, he's done a a good job and he has a he's a great defensive coach but he's also put in the wishbone this year Larry Lacewell has some of his college days but this man Don Fambro is a Jayhawk through and through he sure is he's 59 years old now he played football he was on the 1948 uh, Orange Bowl team here in Kansas he was an assistant for 19 years then he was the head coach for four years then he went to, for another four years to help build the scholarship fund he's back in his second tenure and I'll tell you there were three three and one in the big eight last year and they and one tie and, uh, you know, I think that they uh, they kind of feel they're coming along pretty well. 3-0, not bad. Big Blue of Kansas, an outstanding coach. And Don Fambro, as he mentioned in his second tenure, he was a captain on the 1948 Orange Bowl squad. So an outstanding individual. By the way, Don Fambro tomorrow celebrates his 40th wedding anniversary. So coach looking maybe for an early present here today. I think, Bob, we need to talk about now the keys to this football game. you spent a lot of time at practice looking at film. You know these two teams about as well as the coaches do. From Arkansas State standpoint, what do they need to do to pull off an upset? Well, I think the big thing, of course, they're sky high playing uh, Kansas, and so that, they have that going for them. Uh, but I think that they have to avoid mistakes and try to hang in there and, and control the ball. That's the key. Uh, if they start dropping the ball and fumbling and making, having a lot of penalties, then they could get blown right out of there. Obviously, they're going to have to get some big plays defensively, but I know with a wishbone, it is a control-type offense, and that would be important. Yeah, it really is important, I think. How about Arkansas State? Now we know what they have to do. The University of Kansas, a team that is a heavy favorite. There's no betting line on this game that's such heavy favorites. Well, of course, the question is, has Kansas overlooked Arkansas State, hoping to get thinking about their next week opener in the Big 8 with uh, Oklahoma State? That's, a, that's something we're going to find out. But they'd like to get off to a good start and not let Arkansas State kind of hang in the game here. I think 
they remember here at the University of Kansas last season, Louisville came to top. It was supposed to be an easy game. Instead, Louisville knocked off the Jayhawks. One other thing to remember from the Southland Conference, Lamar pulled off a big win earlier. Yes, remember they early in the season they beat Baylor, so that was the team that was only supposed to win one game. <laughs> Some big questions to answer. We'll start answering them right after this. How do you get good gas mileage? Citation and Ariva. Toyota and Ariva. Lynx and Ariva. Datsun and Ariva. Reliant and Ariva. Goodyear Ariva and all season radio. A steel belted radio designed for traction and to help you save gas. Even its footprint tells you it's different. How do you get good gas mileage? Ariva and 55 miles an hour. Ariva, only from Goodyear. You know, choosing business insurance can be a slippery business. So Fireman's Fund suggests, play it safe with this sign. It belongs to someone who sells our insurance, who chooses from several companies to get you the best policy and price. In short, your independent insurance agent, who serves you first. So for great insurance, call on today and break the ice. In the Yellow Pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. For whatever you need, take the first step, System Yellow Pages. For supplies to build this nursery, for all the furniture you see, I took the very first step. For this wallpaper so nice and sweet, and wool to knit booties for her feet, we took the very first step. The first step puts you steps ahead, saves time, money, energy. So let your fingers do the walking. It's the very first step, the first step. presents NCAA College Football. This afternoon, live from Lawrence, Kansas, it's the Indians of Arkansas State and the Jayhawks of Kansas. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. And by Goodyear, makers of Ariva. Even its footprint tells you it's different. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts to help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Chris Lincoln, along with Bob Beatty and our ABC crew, we welcome you to Lawrence, Kansas. It's Parents' Day, where the crowd has been held down a bit by some of the early morning rain, and where, because of all the festivities, with pre-game brunches and the like, we expect a late-arriving crowd and a morning kickoff at 11.30. Gil Stegel is going to be deep to receive for Arkansas State. They won the toss and wanted the football. Kicking off for the University of Kansas, will be number three, Bruce Kallmeyer. Kallmeyer to kick off, and this Arkansas State's biggest game, in the words of Coach Larry Lacewell, is about ready to get underway. The Jayhawks in the Big Eight, the Southland Conference Indians, and here we go. We get that one. That's the word on Kallmeyer. He really puts it in the back of the end zone, Bob, and that's a pretty good way to play kickoff coverage. Well, the whole kicking game of Kansas is going to be like that because their punter does the same thing, and that means that uh, Arkansas State is usually going to probably be starting deep in their own uh, territory. Arkansas State University with a wishbone. They're in the white, black helmets, red trim. The Jayhawks in their home blue uniforms. Rick Spivey, the quarterback right there, number 13. He'll have Carthen, Kelly, Walker in the straight wishbone behind him. First down, 10 from the 21st play of the game. Take the fullback, second man, hit, spins away. With the football, Dennis Walker for a gain of two, maybe three. Over on the right side for KU, nose guard Greg Smith, 77, made the tackle. Short gain on the play. It'll be second down and about seven. That's me now. The offensive starters for Arkansas State. Rick Spiver back, the junior from Benton, Arkansas. The speedster, Waddell Kelly, 32 left halfback. Dennis Walker, the right side halfback, who just carried number 22. And the fullback, Maurice Carthen, number 33. They break the wishbone. 
and the slot to the right side. Second down, seven. This is the fullback. Carthen to the 25, 26. It'll be third down, still about four for the, for the Indians, the Jayhawk defense, led by linebacker number 81, Kyle McNorton, along with Guy Neighbors, 91, made the initial hit. It is third down and four now for ASU. Wishbone formation this time. This on third and a long four is still very much a running play in the wishbone. Spivey makes the fullback, goes to the corner, keeps it, cuts up field, and is going to be close to a first down. He may have gotten it just across the 30. It looks like the Indians have the initial first down. A good read there, Bob. And it looks as though if Arkansas State is going to be successful today, they're going to have to go outside and work those corners. Here's that offensive line. Paul Gilbo, senior, 260. Next to him at 255 is Ken Armbrust. Next to him, a senior, John McCaughey. The right guard at 245 pounds is Tommy Walker. The right side tackle, a hometown boy from Jonesboro, Rob Wiles, number 63. The tight end, 82, Jerry Mack, with three catches of 14 yards this season. It is first and 10, just across the 30 for ASU. Spivey with the wishbone. This time, hands to his fullback, and he is smacked. Right in the backfield as soon as Carthen took it. Guy Neighbors 91 and nose guard 77, Greg Smith. Well, Greg Smith weighs 275 pounds. He's very agile, and I don't think that Arkansas State is going to have much luck running inside. Defensively for Kansas, Marky Alexander, Thompson, Smith, the guy in the middle who just made the tackle, Wilbur's Horn, and the great linebackers, Chaviron along with McNaught, Wagner, Coleman, Gentry, McNeely, the three for Kansas. Second down, 11 after the loss of one. Again, fake the fullback, Spivey keeps it, trying to get running him outside, goes to about the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and a long six for the Indians. Defensively, 84, Gary Coleman, Kyle McNaughton, 81, was also out there. Marky Alexander, 47. Four-yard gain on the plays. You see Spivey's statistics so far in 1981. Here's another look from the end zone. Okay, here we can see Spivey riding his fullback and then coming out to the corner. He waits for that defensive player to make a commitment, which he does right here, and now he tries to come up, up inside, but the KU defense was able to stretch it out. Lost football, scramble for it. As we're back to live action, Arkansas State recovers, but they'll have to kick it away. Waddell Kelly, 32, got on the loose football, but it'll be fourth down, long yardage, and in will come the punter. Bruce Gartman for the first time this afternoon. Gartman is averaging 41.5 yards a game, and he last year kicked 85 punts. That's over two miles of punt. Dan Wagner, number five, deep in single safety as you look at the punter, Gartman. The rush is on. Oh, Gartman just barely got it off. Low spiral, bounces inside the 30-yard line. And Kansas will start at their own 26 as the ball is down there. 11 minutes, 41 seconds left in the first quarter. It's one first down and a punt for the Indians. Now the Jayhawks take the field. We'll go on offense with KU right after this. Now, 82 Chevy Cavalier from A to Z, the complete car. This two-door coupe's our lowest price Cavalier, just $69.66. But what if I want an electric rear window departure? It's still $69.66. What about reclining front seats? It's still $69.66. AM radio, digital clock, remote trunk release, $69.66. 66. Now save hundreds of dollars with 13.8% financing on both Cavalier and 81 Citation. I can tell a real cowboy from the drugstore kind, clean across Texas. The way he wears his hat will tell you. And the beer that you drink is a surefire giveaway, too. A lot of us drink light beer from Miller. We love the taste, but we surely appreciate that it's got a third less calories than the regular kind. You see, you don't want to be filled up when you're out there punching doggies. Ain't that right, cowboy? I didn't punch that doggy. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Chris Lincoln, along with Bob Biotti, we welcome you back to Lawrence, Kansas. 11.41 left in the first quarter. Arkansas State got one first down, then had to pump the football. And now it belongs to Kansas, the Jayhawks. First series on offense, and here they come. Frank Sire, the quarterback number 10. Kansas shows an eye formation, slot, split to the right side. 
Butch Taylor in the backfield. It goes to Garfield Taylor, the replacement for Kerwin Bell. Two to three yards on the play. Defensively, Jordan Boyd, number 48, the linebacker. The offensive up front for Kansas. Dave Wessling, the left tackle. Paul Fairchild, the left guard at 240. The center, Ed Bruce from Lee Summit, Missouri. He's a senior. The sophomore and one of the outstanding freshmen in the country, Casey Brown, a year ago. It'll be Greg Roach, the starting right tackle. And Jeff Schleicher is the tight end. Back to live action. Second down, eight, Kansas. Sire goes this time to Garfield again. He goes across the 30 to the 33 for Garfield Taylor off the right side tackle block of Greg Roach, who you just met. Mike Morris, the linebacker, 59 on the tackle for Arkansas State. Gain of five on the play. Third down and about three for KU. Keep in mind, they have to get across the 36 for the first down. Sire sends Capers Flanker to the top of the screen. Split to the bottom is Russ Baston. This time they open the backfield in the pro set. Rolling, Sire hits the man, first down to the 40. To the 45-yard line, it is Garfield Taylor out of bounds. First down, Kansas, gain of 11. Now the offensive backfield for the University of Kansas. Their quarterback, sophomore Frank Sire from Huntington Beach, California. Honorable mention, all big eight as a freshman. Brad Butts is the fullback, not a big fullback, only about 200 pounds. Garfield Taylor just caught that ball. You just met and Wayne Capers, their leading receiver, the flanker. The other receiver, Bob Johnson, is split in a very talented athlete. That's a rundown of the KU starters. First down, Kansas at their own 45-yard line in a scoreless first quarter just underway in Lawrence. Oh, good hit there as Lawrence Garfield Taylor was hit by Robert King, number 45, the defensive end. And we got a good look there, Bob, at the defense of Arkansas State. Montgomery, Tillman, Johnson, the nose guard. Algis along with King, Morris, and Boyd. Then it's Harris, Tim Allison, who we talked about earlier, and Curtis Clay in the secondary. The defense for Arkansas State. It is second down and nine. Kansas, their own 46-yard line. High backfield, slot split to this near side. Sire on the option, makes the pitch. Taylor got the running room. Midfield, Taylor, 45, breaks the tackle. First down, Kansas at the Arkansas State, 42. Gain of 12 on the play. So Kansas comes back and shows Arkansas State some option football. Well, they sure are. But, you know, right now, it was looking at Garfield Taylor right here. He had that great game last week with 135 yards rushing. And here we can see it again. Sire just comes down the line and pitches back to Garfield Taylor. And this is the man that really has a lot of pressure on him with the injury to Kerwin Bell. First and 10, Jayhawks. Taylor, four carries, 20 yards. They're at the Arkansas State 42. Scoreless first quarter. Sire is in trouble and down he goes in the arms of Jordan Boyd, the linebacker coming in. Sire goes down for a loss of five and Bob, that's the Arkansas State defense we talked about. Lacewell loves to make things happen. Well, that's what Arkansas State really has to do today. And talking to Coach Lacewell earlier, he said, we've got to be aggressive. We're going to have to take some chances. We just can't move back and defend. They're going to have to go out and try to really be more aggressive probably than they ordinarily would. Jordan Boyd, a junior college transfer from Northeast Mississippi. They were number six in the nation last year. Arkansas State's done very well with junior college players this season. 8.40 left. First quarter, scoreless, second down, 15, Kansas. At the Arkansas State, 47. Sire to throw and throws behind. It is tied in, intended for Jeff Schleicher, number 90, and simply a bad pass, incomplete. Well, he really did have Schleicher wide open then, and that's sort of been the problem that uh, Sire has had this year, being a little bit erratic, maybe hurrying his throws too much. Talk about a teacher, though. How would you like any quarterback to have John Hadel as your quarterback coach? You aren't I'm going to know the game or that position better than John Hale. Well, it's pretty amazing. Uh, John Hale, of course, recruited uh, Sire out of Huntington Beach. And, uh, you know, he picked a pretty good one to come see. John Hale, an All-American here at Kansas. Third down, 15. Big down to the Jayhawks. Sire wants to throw, and it is batted away. Getting the hands up there was number 83, Gary Burton, a freshman out of all-time Arkansas. Had a severe hand injury as a freshman, got a hardship ruling. 
And Gary Burton made a big defensive play there. So for the first time, we'll see the punter for the Jayhawks, number eight, Bucky Scribner. Number one in the Big Eight Conference. He's a hometown boy from Lawrence. And look at those figures. Oh, what a dimension he gives this team. When you've got a strong defense like Kansas has, and then a punter on top of that like Scribner, you know, it makes it pretty tough for the opposing team because they have to start so far back. Number 15, Benny McGinnis is back single D for the Indians. It is fourth down, 15. Kansas will punt from the ASU 47. Scribner hits it from his own 45, and it goes inside the five and out of bounds at the one. Out of bounds at the one. A 46-yard punt by Bucky Scribner, and just as Bob Beatty told us, that's the weapon that Kansas...